Hello, welcome to my very late presentation for the Grignard Reaction Lab we did a few weeks ago. This is Sophie, and my lab partner is Colby. Okay, so what is a Grignard reagent? It is an organometallic compound that can form carbon carbon bonds, uh, and they can add to a wide range of electrophiles, so they act as nucleophiles. Um, that shows the general structure of a Grignard reagent, with the R being an alkyl or an aryl, uh, bonded to a magnesium, which is bonded to a halogen. And these are formed by reacting magnesium metal with alkyl or alkenyl halides. Um, so why does that matter? They are extremely good nucleophiles, and they will react with a wide range of electrophiles, such as carbonyl-containing species and epoxides. Um, but they're also strong bases, so they want to deprotonate acidic hydrogens. So you have to watch out um, if you're combining a Grignard reagent with a strong acid because it might not do what you are wanting it to do because acid-based chemistry happens first. Uh, when preparing a Grignard reagent, you will combine a magnesium with an aryl bromide. Um, in this lab, we combine magnesium with 4-bromotoluene, and it's a radical, free radical mechanism. So one of the electrons on the magnesium will come up onto the bromine, which will break the bond to that aromatic ring there. Um, and then that will leave us with one electron on the carbon in the aromatic ring and that one electron will bond covalently with the last electron on the magnesium uh, and that will form our Grignard reagent there and Grignard reagents work well as nucleophiles because there's a strong charge on that magnesium atom there which makes a strong partial negative charge on the adjacent carbon so it can act as that nucleophile. Uh, so in this specific reaction we reacted that Grignard reagent with propanol and propanol is a good electrophile because it has that partial positive on the carbon in the carbonyl so a lot of the electrons are being pulled up to that oxygen, uh, making that carbon a good place to attack for the Grignard reagent. So that's the Grignard reagent's going to come in, attack that, bump the electrons up to the oxygen, and that's going to give us our tetrahedral intermediate. Um, and the negative charge on the oxygen is going to come over, grab that H from HCl, and form our product, which is neutral. Uh, these two other products can be formed in this reaction, but this is not what we want. Um, so this would happen if the Grignard came and grabbed a hydrogen from, from 4-bromotoluene, causing an elimination reaction. Um, so this could form bi aryl or toluene. Uh, so to avoid that, we want to maintain the reaction temperature and not add all of the aryl bromide solution to magnesium at once because um, we want a much higher ratio of magnesium in order to increase the formation of the Grignard product or the Grignard I guess. Uh, so how do we remove any of these byproducts that form during the reaction? We will do something called trituration which is when we added five milliliters of anhydrous ether to the reaction tube and that dissolved any of the biphenyls which were formed during the reaction. And then those biphenyls were 
rinsed out when we rinsed into the aqueous layer. So if we had had a solid product, we would have done this trituration again, but we had an oil, so we just had to do it once. Uh, this is our IR that we got from our product. So it looks pretty good. We have our alcohol there around 3,400. And then we had our aromatic peaks there at 1513 and 1607, as well as the aromatic overtones. Uh, and then those other peaks to the left are our SP3 hybridized carbons from our product. So yeah, our IR looked pretty good. Um, it looks like all the propanol is gone because there is no aldehyde peak around 1720 and there aren't any noticeable impurities. Um, our proton NMR also looked good. All of the peaks that we got accounted for hydrogens hydrogen groups there on our molecule and the only one that we couldn't figure out was E but that had that was such a small peak 0 0.37 that we thought that might not have been anything at all anything important at least um, the peak J at 1.1 probably was our diethyl ether so yeah that also looked good no obvious impurities and yeah. Uh, we did not get a melting point on our product because it was an oil and you can't get a melting point on an oil because it's already a liquid. So yeah, didn't do that. Um, we got 82.8% yield, which was pretty good. And yeah, we figured that some of our product could have been lost through transfers from beaker to beaker, um, as well as some of it being turned into a byproduct because we had a hard time maintaining our reaction temperature. It, our reaction kind of would start and then stop and start up again. So next time we would try to do a better job with those two things, especially keeping the reaction at a constant temperature but other than that the reaction went well so yeah there we go there's the presentation stay safe thank you for listening just gonna